8. The Submerged Archaeological Park of Baia, Italy In the Gulf of Naples in Italy, you can step or rather dive back in time to the height of the Roman Empire and see what was formerly one of the go-to resorts for rich and influential Romans. The Roman city of Baia was a party paradise, not unlike how many see places like Ibiza today. The historian Seneca noted that there was as much music being played as there were drunk people, and parties were held on boats and villas. It seemed like whatever happened in Baia stayed in Baia. The reason that Baia is now a diving rather than a party hotspot is due to a rather curious phenomenon known as Brady Seism. It's a seismic occurrence much like earthquakes. However, while earthquakes occur horizontally, Brady Seism happens at a vertical angle, moving the earth up and down. During one of these events, Baia ended up falling under the waves. There are five signs of the diving location for you to explore, each one offering a different insight into the Roman city. At Ninfeo di Claudio, you can swim across a paved road and enjoy signs of the foundations of the steam baths and replicas of the elegant statues of the Nymphaeum where Emperor Claudius liked to hang out. Villa Aprotiro is one of the most popular spots. The ruins of this old villa have a stunning black and white mosaic floor, which would have once been part of the building's courtyard. Although these are the most notable locations, make sure that if you visit, your guide takes you to see everything this piece of history has to offer. 7. Vercenbai Car Piles, Curacao If you like vintage motors and scuba diving, then the Vercenbai Car Piles in Curacao are a must-see. An entire barge of 1950s vehicles were taken out into the water off of Versembai Beach and sunk at the start of the 1970s in order to create an artificial reef to promote the recovery of marine life. It seemed to do a good job because as you dive down to the many cars and trucks scattered on the seabed, you'll see plenty of coral making its home on the vehicle's chassis. You might even spot a moray eel poking out from one of the headlights. One of the top attractions for the divers here is a wreck of a pickup truck which is in great condition, positioned at a horizontal angle into the seafloor. In the back of the truck, its cargo now is a shed load of coral, with fish weaving through it. The cars start to appear once you're roughly 45 feet under the water and continue to emerge the deeper down you swim, so divers need to be aware not to get too carried away. 6. Million Dollar Point Vanuatu Million Dollar Point is located on the island of Espiritu Santo in Vanuatu. The dive site is unique not only in its name, but also in what you can find there. To find out how this diving location got its name, we need to rewind to World War II when the US Army had a base on the island. Located in the Pacific Ocean, it was a perfect place to attack the Japanese forces. As a result, the US fortified the base by creating roads, buildings, and airfields. Although the US was using it as a base of operations, Vanuatu was in fact a territory that was controlled by Britain and France and at the time was referred to as the condominium of the New Hebrides. We don't know about you, but Vanuatu is much easier to say. As the war came to a close, the Americans needed to figure out what to do with all their stuff. Without plans to take it with them, they needed to find new owners for things such as furniture, clothing, cars, and all their food and drink stores. The best customers for this would be the government of Vanuatu. However, the governing bodies of the country were Britain and France. They thought that they could get an even better price than the rock bottom offer the US gave them, or perhaps if they waited long enough, they'd get it for free. The Americans were having none of this and came up with another plan. They gathered all of the items together at a port on the south of the island, got some bulldozers, and then pushed it all into the sea. The bulldozers followed too. All in all, millions of dollars worth of possessions went into the water, thus why the dive site is named Million Dollar Point. Aside from what the locals managed to salvage at the time, divers can make their way through a labyrinth of rusting vehicles, cranes, and the odd Coca-Cola bottle or two. 5. Yonaguni Monument, Japan In 1986, Kiyachiro Arataki discovered the location of the site, although Yonaguni had already become a renowned scuba diving location for Japanese divers looking to view the hammerhead sharks that called the area home in the 1980s. Aratake was looking for new shark hotspots in order to offer tours to fellow divers when he came across a monument towering out of the seabed. Due to its shape, 
he nicknamed it the underwater Machu Picchu. Today, locals and visitors call it Kaite Yaseki, which means the monument at the bottom of the sea. This is where the debate as to the origin of the site came into play. Many scientists and other academics began to theorize whether this discovery was a natural formation or, in fact, whether it had been constructed by a long-lost civilization. There's a lot to debate as to whether the site is actually part of the lost continent of Mu, considered by many to be the Atlantis of the Pacific Ocean. In fact, there's been a lot of research done to put stock behind the idea that it is a man-made structure. Masaki Kimura, a professor of marine geology and seismology, has concluded that the 85-tool monument is made of mudstone and sandstone. Not only that, but at the site they found evidence of human habitation, including stone tools for farming, evidence of roads, stone tablets, and even a carved face that bears a resemblance to those found on Easter Island. However, other researchers believe that the site is natural in a sense, as the rocks it's made from can stack in formations such as this. Many don't dispute that humans may have lived there, concluding that the civilization would just have made a few small renovations to the existing natural structure in order to make it habitable. Do you think this monument is a product of ancient engineering or a natural wonder? Let us know which you think it is in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more interesting videos. 4. SS Yongala, Australia On March 23, 1911, the steamship the SS Yongala was sailing through the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. However, the conditions were stormy and a cyclone picked up that led the Yongala to sink beneath the waves. 122 people would lose their lives in the sudden capsizing of the vessel, with many not knowing what might have caused this event to occur so quickly. The ship would go undiscovered for almost five decades until it was rediscovered in 1958. Now, the Yongala sits on its side at a depth of 45 feet at the top of the boat and 90 feet to the bottom where it hits the sand of the seabed. Due to the nature in which it capsized, it's one of the most intact vessels in Australian waters, despite the fact that it's over 110 years old. Thanks to the location in which it capsized, the SS Yongala is now a haven for marine life. The entire vessel is encrusted in colorful coral, and many different aquatic species make their home amongst the metal frame. Various rays, sea snakes, barracuda, turtles, and even bull sharks can be found around the wreck. 3. The SS Thistlegorn, the Red Sea On October 6, 1941, the SS Thistlegorn was preparing to sail through the Suez Canal in Egypt and had stopped to wait until the all cleared to proceed at Shag Rock. The Thistlegorm, complete with her cargo of tanks, planes, and other armored vehicles, was struck by two long-range bombs from a German vessel. The bombs punched a hole in the port side of the ship, which might have been salvageable. However, they also penetrated through to the storage for the tank ammunition on board, which exploded so violently that the ship split in two pieces. Due to the gravity of the blast, the Thistlegorm did not take long to sink beneath the waves. Thankfully, only nine crew members lost their lives, with the rest making it safely off of the ship. SS Thistlegorm would sit at the bottom of the Red Sea until it was found by Jacques Cousteau in 1956, 15 years after its demise. From just one man rediscovering it, the ship's wreck now has countless divers visiting it every year, making it one of the most popular diving locations in the world. The traffic through the vessel can get so busy that it can even create air pockets in some areas of the ship. It's easy to see why many people are fascinated with the Thistle Gorm. Not only does it have a connection to World War II, but it's a treasure trove of artifacts. Aside from those lost in the catastrophic blast back in 1941, there's plenty for you to discover, and a lot of it remains in remarkable condition. Bedford trucks and jeeps remain parked up in the hold, and many of them still have their glass windows and tires still in one piece. Fish swim about stationary motorbikes, and those that feel more adventurous can head to see the bombs, rifles, and ammo stored away in some of the holds. If you wish to see the grisly aftermath of what happened to the Thistlegorm after the explosion, head to the middle of the ship. Here, you'll find the metal peeled back from the force of the blast, as if someone has taken a giant can opener to the hull. To show just how massive the blast was, it even managed to send a Bren carrier tank and a train flying, which can be seen to the side of the ship on the seabed. 2. 
USS Kitewaki, Cayman Islands The USS Kitewaki is one of the most famous diving spots in the Caribbean. However, it was also a remarkable ship when it was sailing too. The vessel was classed as a submarine rescue ship and it took its maiden voyage on July 10, 1945. It would remain in service for 49 years before being decommissioned in 1994. Most often, her main duty would be to accompany submarines on training exercises. However, she was also a part of a few historical events. In 1960, Kitawaki provided assistance to the USS George Washington for the first successful launch of a Polaris missile from a submerged submarine. She also helped to rescue Cuban refugees in 1963, some of them being children, taking them to safety. The thing that the USS Kitawaki is known for happened in 1986. The NASA Challenger disaster had just occurred, and officials were frantically searching for the black box from the spacecraft to help them figure out what had caused the tragedy. Out of all the ships sent out by the military and the Coast Guard, it was the Kitawaki that managed to find it. The USS Kitawaki may have ended up sitting in a US dockyard for the rest of her existence until a bid for the ship came in from the Cayman Islands. They wished to add it to one of their artificial reefs and could think of no better ship than the Kitawaki to be the star of their subnautical show. The long process of getting the ship ready began, which meant removing any hazardous materials and making it more accessible to divers by opening up more spaces on the ship. 800 yards off of Seven Mile Beach on Grand Cayman, you can now find the Kitawaki's final resting spot after she was finally sunk in 2011. She's a popular attraction, with many divers exploring her interior and even taking selfies at the captain's wheel. With an abundance of marine life living on and in the vessel, a fabled history and five floors to explore, it's clear to see why this is a diver's paradise. 1. The Zenobia, Cyprus Despite suffering from misfortune on her maiden voyage, the Zenobia now finds fame as one of the top dive sites in the world. She was built in Sweden in 1979, and the RORO class ferry was set to make her first journey from Malmo all the way to Tartus in Syria. She was holding a whole range of cargo, many of them heavy vehicles such as forklifts and tractors, among other items. However, the Zenobia never made it to her final destination. When she was in the waters around Cyprus, she began to tilt to one side, which was a resulting problem with her ballasting system which was distributing water unevenly. She was turned away from the port in Lanaka as they couldn't help. Shortly after 2 in the morning on June 7, 1980, the Zenobia sank about a mile offshore. Her cargo was worth a staggering $221,730,000. This led to a lot of conversation about the true nature of her capsizing. Many people thought that it might have been an attempt at insurance fraud, and the captain taking his own life less than a year after the incident did not help to allay suspicions. Either way, nowadays the Zenobia makes for an amazing diving spot. Not only can you see all of its many millions of dollars worth of cargo, but it's one of the best places in Cyprus to see all sorts of marine life that would normally not be at home there together, such as grouper, barracuda, tuna, turtle, and triggerfish. Which of these dive sites would you want to swim? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!